click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. Now, from now on notes, we are going to study a different numericals on inverse Laplace transform. In previous videos, we have studied a different types of numericals on Laplace transform. Here also, we are going to study a different types of numericals in inverse Laplace transform. Basically, there are different types of cases which is based on poles. We have a simple pole, multiple poles, complex conjugate poles and many more things. So these are the cases that we are going to study in next coming videos. So current video is based on inverse Laplace transform of simple pole and multiple pole. So let's go through the question first. We are going to study a problem number one which is based on inverse Laplace transform of simple pole and multiple poles. Now, the question is simple. Determine the inverse Laplace transform of x of s and the function is 2 upon s into s plus 1 into s plus 2. Basically, the current example is based on a simple pole. Multiple pole means what? We have number of poles on this same location, which means we can have a s plus a the whole square or you can say s square or s plus b the whole square, which means we have a number of poles on the same locations. Now, the current numerical is based on a simple pole. Simple pole means what? Poles on different locations. Then what do you mean by multiple pole? Multiple pole means what? On a single location or you can say on the same location, we have a number of poles, which means if this question is related to a multiple poles, then this question will be x of s equals two upon, this can be the s square. S square means we have a two poles on the origin. Maybe this can be s plus one the whole square, which means we have a two poles on the minus one location. So similar type of questions we are going to solve later on. The current numerical is a simple pole. So let's go through the question solution first. So let's go through the solution first. Now the question was x of s is equal to two upon s into s plus one plus s plus two. Basically, in inverse Laplace transform or you can say while finding inverse Laplace or inverse Z or inverse Fourier, we have to take help of a partial fraction. Now, how to solve a numerical using partial fraction? I'll show you. First of all, I'm writing the question. Now the question is x of s is equal to 2 upon s into s plus 1 into s plus 2. Look at here, we have a three poles, which means while solving a partial fraction, we have to take different types of variables, different variables. Basically, different variables is completely equal to or totally equal to the number of poles. Now here, the number of poles are three, which means variables also three. So we'll place single variable for a simple poles. Let's say, my variables are a b c so my i'll assign a for s b for s plus one and c for s plus two and this was my equation number one now using partial fraction method we'll calculate the values of a b c but first of all we have to make one equation first of all i'll multiply this whole denominator with a so my equation is this will be on the left hand side we have only two because denominator part is multiplying i'm going to multiply on right hand side so on left hand side we have only two now after multiplying this denominator with a by s then what you can say ss gets cancelled but s plus one and s plus two will be there so a now i'm going to multiply this denominator on the right hand side first of all we multiply this whole denominator with a by s so on left hand side we have only a 2 and on right hand side what you will get after multiplying this whole denominator with a by s we can say that this s and this s will get cancelled so a will be multiplied with s plus 1 and s plus 2 now we'll multiply with b what you can say this s plus 1 s plus 1 will get cancelled so s into s plus 2 will be there and the last one 
here we have s plus 2 so s plus 2 and s plus 2 will get cancelled we will get only s into s plus 1 which will be multiplied with the c now what is important we have to substitute the value of s such that we will get the values of a b c separately which means i will show you first how to do that now here if we want to cancel or if we want only a value you can cancel a or b to find out c or you can do the same thing to find out b on the for c also now right now i just want to calculate the value for a so just simply substitute s equal to zero because here we have s plus one and s plus two whenever we want to calculate the value of any variable then always substitute the value of s which is not there in the product term now here we don't have a s term in this product term so which ones we are going to i'm going to substitute the value of s equal to zero i'm putting s equal to zero in this equation number two what you will get this s will become zero this will also get to zero zero so whole product becomes zero this whole product will also become zero so what you will get in this s and this will also s will be replaced by zero so we have on left hand side we have only two and the right hand side we have this will become zero so we have only one and two in another bracket now one into two is two so therefore we have a two into twice of a so therefore your a value is now after shifting this to on denominator 2 by 2 will get cancelled answer is 1 this is our first variable value similarly we will calculate the value for b and c there is one shortcut method to substitute the value of s to find out the values of different variables basically in a denominator of a we have a s term that's why i have replaced s equal to 0 which means we have to equate this value or pole value with equal to 0 then whatever value of s will be there that we have to substitute in the place of a now i just right now i'm going to calculate value of b now look at here in the denominator of b we have s plus 1 so simply equate s plus 1 with a 0 what you will get s is equal to minus 1 so substitute s equal to minus 1 in equation number 2 what you will get the answer for b now i'm going to substitute value of s equal to minus 1 to only to find out variable b value but in equation number 2 i'm going to substitute what you will get on the left hand side we have only 2 and on the right hand side what we have basically a was multiplied with s plus 1 and s plus 2 but if we replace that first s all this by minus 1 then what you will get minus 1 plus 1 then minus 1 plus 2 these terms are multiplied with a now in b we have a s into s plus 2 so simple s is multiplied by minus 1 and now in case of c what was there minus 1 and s plus 1 now look at here minus 1 plus 1 become 0 minus 1 plus 1 become 0 which means a is multiplied with 0 and c is also multiplied with 0 and here in case of b we have minus 1 and in one bracket and 2 minus 1 is 1 in another bracket now as i told you earlier minus 1 plus 1 will give us a zero value so zero into anything is zero so a will be multiplied with zero that i have written over here similar things that i have done with a c also now look at here this zero into c and zero into a becomes zero but look at here minus 1 into 1 is minus b so we have so multiplied minus sign on both these sides what we will get our b value is now minus 2 the similarly we'll do the same thing for c as 
as we have to calculate the value of C. Now, in equation number 1, what was there in the denominator of C? There was a S plus 2. So, what I said, whenever we want to calculate the value of that variable, always equate the in denominator of that variable equal to 0. Now, the denominator of C was S plus 2. So, I am going to equate that S plus 2 equal to 0. What we will get? S equals to minus 2. Which means, we have to replace all the S which is present in equation number 2 by minus 2. So, what you will get? All the S was replaced by minus 2. Now look at it. Minus 2 plus 2 will become 0. So whole product becomes 0. So we have A into 0. Similar look at here. Minus 2 into 2 will become 0. So whole product becomes 0. Now we have only B into 0. But look at here. Minus 2 plus 1 gives us a minus 1. So minus 1 and minus 2 will give us plus 2. Now, as this two product will give us a 0, so we have only 0 plus 0 plus 2c. Now, so after shifting these two on the left hand side, what will we get? c equals to 1. Now, what I am going to do, as I told you earlier, as once we get the values of a, b, c, just substitute all the values of a, b, c in equation number 1. So, after substituting the values of a, b, c in equation number 1, we get x of s is equal to 1 by s plus minus 2 by s plus 1 plus c value is 1 and we have s plus 2 in the denominator. Now, what is the next step? Actually, in inverse Laplace transform, we always want a result in x of t. A Laplace transform is used to transform any continuous time signal or any time signal into Laplace domain. So, the reciprocal is inverse Laplace transform. Basically, in inverse Laplace transform, any continuous time signal or a time signal is transformed into Laplace domain. So, vice versa. In inverse Laplace transform, we always regenerate our continuous or time signal from Laplace domain. So, here the equation is given in S domain or Laplace domain or you can say frequency domain. Now, we have to write the equation in terms of time domain. That's why we have to prefer or we have to take a help of inverse Laplace transform. So, applying inverse Laplace transform on both the sides of this equation, what you will get? Inverse Laplace transform is x of s is nothing but x of t. Now, here Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform 1 by s that we know, unit step. Here, the, we have minus 2 s plus 1. First of all, write the equation for 1 by s because we know that Laplace transform of unit step was 1 by s. So, of course, inverse Laplace terms of 1 by S will be a unit step. Now, I will write minus 2 first because it is a constant. Now, here minus 2 is a constant. That is why I have taken outside first. Now, what we will get? 1 upon S plus 1. Basically, whenever S is replaced by S plus 1, which means there is a frequency shifting property. And how to represent that frequency shifting property that we have studied in property session. Whenever any input signal is multiplied by exponential signal, then we can say that that signal, the input signal will be frequency shifted by given value. Now here, the frequency was shifted by minus 1, which means 1 input O is there, which is multiplied by exponential function. So, I am writing the exponential function first and the value or the power in power of exponential function is here we have 1 and that 1 will be multiplied with the t. So, we have 
minus t because in frequency shifting property we have studied if we have e to the power minus t then resultant is always s plus 1 now we have calculated the frequency shift but what is remaining 1 by s and we know that the laplace transform inverse laplace transform 1 by s is always unit step so while solving a numericals of inverse laplace transform in your result there is always unit step exist because in each and every part we have 1 by s 1 by s 1 by s which means whatever result will be there you have to multiply each and every term by unit step if we have 1 by s and if we have only one or there then we know that there is a one input elementary function that we have studied in laplace transform session laplace transform of any direct delta function is always a one which means if we have a one over here then Laplace transform of inverse Laplace transform of that function is represented by del t. Now look at here. Here we have 1 by s in all the terms which means we have to multiply all the terms by unit step. Now look at here. Here we have a plus 1 so I will write only 1. Now 1 upon s plus 2. Here also this s is replaced by s plus 2 which means we have a frequency shifting property we have to take or we have to consider. So here this s is replaced by s plus 2 or you can say this s is advanced by s plus 2. So exponential part in the power of exponential we have to multiply t by here we have plus 2 then we will multiply it by minus 2 and then we have 1 by s and it is nothing but unit step. Now if you want then you can take unit step common from all the equations. What you will get? This unit step is replaced by 1 and this one will nothing but minus 2 e to the power minus t and this is e to the power minus 2t. And this is our inverse Laplace transform of function. Now, basically, a simple pole numericals or you can say numericals of inverse Laplace transform based on simple pole is quite simple to solve. But if you move ahead towards a multiple pole or a complex conjugate poles, then you may face some difficulties in that. So, whenever you are solving a simple pole numericals, there will not be any difficulty if you are good in mathematics. Now, we will study a next numerical related to simple pole in next video. But for that, stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.